right. Yeah, that's looking good. Everything's looking good. All systems go. Alrighty. Welcome back, guys. Thank you very much for joining us again here tonight. Looks everything looks like everything is working just fine. Uh, tonight's going to be a quick little broadcast, um, and uh, as you can see, Chief is home. <laughs> <laughs> so, Half of him's here. Yeah, um, it's been uh, it's been a long time coming um, since the very last broadcast. A couple of things going forward, um, just so that you guys know, for all the broadcast going forward from here is that if you do have a complaint or if you do have an issue, please take it off, over and off the line with us um, via HighRail3D at gmail.com and we will do our best to help service those particular issues that you're currently seeing. Um, if, you do, <laughs> if you do persist and put those th particular things up here on this particular forum, which is only to communicate what's been going on for the past week, or uh, the past weeks in this case, sure um, printing techniques. Um, then um, we may have to time you out or possibly ban you. So it's a new particular rule that we're going forward with so that you're not wasting anybody else's time who's trying to get some information and we can disseminate as much information as possible. Thank you. So, um, let's see who we have on online tonight. Let's see. Uh, we got uh, Alan, Coder96, Touch by Viper Tetrahedron, uh, JMC Ballon, Less Music, Toledib, and Yeoman. Thank you very much, guys, for joining us. And of course, you beautiful, beautiful lurkers out there who are continuing to watch our streams. Thank you. Yep. Greetings, Earthlings. <laughs> I think I'm somewhere on another planet right now. Um, yeah, this was a long time I've been away. It seems like I was stuck in for three weeks there in limbo. Yep. Um, so, a lot of supply chain management, a little bit of uh, fever management, and uh, actually a lot of fever management, and um, we, we made some progress, I guess is the one way to say it. Uh, it's very disconcerting to think that you're depending on some people and they're not doing what you want them to do. I guess that's the way a lot of people feel here sometimes. But we stick continue and the uh, good thing is those of you that have received your machines and not received all of the heads that uh, an additional 200 heads were started while I was in China and uh, they are the parts are due on Friday and they will be assembled next week for us so uh, I think we finally found a machine shop that has the quality and the, the desire to deliver and that was very exciting the reason I was in China primarily was to get circuit boards made, and we got 1,600 made there, uh, which they're in numerous boxes, and we have received all of them here as of yesterday. Uh, so that's great. Uh, my initial test showed that they were working, and uh, a few of them were stuffed with uh, of the hothead controllers in particular with higher capacity microcontrollers for our some people who might want to do some additional experimenting with them, they would be ideal because there's room to expand the code. Uh, so I know uh, Ken up in Canada and um, Greg Buchner, of course, uh, you guys, if you're ready for it, um, we'll dig, dig out the code and um, the higher capacity hothead controllers that were built and they have 64K of flash instead of 32. So there's a whole 32K of flash available for additional routines and experimentation so uh, that that we can make those available to you guys uh, I guess for me the, the silver lining of such a grueling trip is to, to see that we have two people that have joined more or less full-time for us in there and um, <coughs> one of them helping us with business management that will be tied and we appreciate his help so much yes. as you guys know we mentioned all the time, time. Uh, he opened his office. We actually are sharing his office with him there, and he's in the heart of the most fruit, <laughs> fruitful valley of technology I've ever experienced before. And just thrilled. He's his office is in a. You're gonna like this. It's very desirable. It's in, well, it's a desirable location, <laughs> but it's on the ninth floor, and the room number is nine eleven. So it's easy to remember. I never had trouble remembering what room to go to when I went up to the ninth floor. Uh, but uh, it was it was good and it's great and then York is a new guy York Lynn and he's a young man but is showing 
great every day showing great results for me so he's helping us to tackle some of the more difficult sourcing problems we've had and uh, that short and long term pays rich dividends to everybody yeah. um, I think as Dan mentioned it'll be a short broadcast tonight that's mostly my doing I think because I have still got severe jet lag and um, it sounds like a terrible thing you'd think after five days I'd be over this but uh, the truth of it is I'm up half the night every night with the guys in China and I don't think I've figured out where I'm at yet so uh, I'm up because they've got all these answers to the questions I have and of course every time I ask a question they come back with three questions to ask back about the question or the answer they found so we're spending a lot of Skype time and a lot of email time but uh, yeah I'm real pleased you guys you've all been wonderful and one thing we try to do is keep the food chain coming through um, it's not always a perfect world uh, we had a lot of trouble with our original circuit board supplier who um, well after being two weeks late and almost messing up my return fortunately I was able to change my return uh, decided they would charge us an expedite fee because they were late and we were like little fisticuffs battle action there anyway the blessing is we shopped for even more suppliers and found a couple of great people and have already run over a thousand boards through one of them and I'm very pleased with their, uh, their quality um, and I'm also pleased with the fact that we are a priority for them that makes it easier for us to make you a priority for us and that's the fact so um, trying to think if there was anything else oh yes yes there is a couple things we uh, have arranged to take on full-time the young man who was um, worked for us last summer he graduates with his master's degree in four weeks and then he will be mm -hmm. joining us and that's fantastic because he's been doing some of the more exotic prints the 25 micron print oh, yeah. uh, he's, a, he's actually turned out to well, he was when we met him he was exceptional but he's really I think an exceptional person and I think he's going to be a fine engineer and so I, I really look forward to having some extra help. So I think that's a big, big bonus for us. Mm -hmm. And uh, we'll, we'll bring him on with the broadcaster and introduce him to everybody when we finally get lassoed in here full time. Well, yeah. Um, we'll, have to, we'll have to wrench him away from his wife. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We were concerned about his maturity until we realized he is uh, both going to have a master's degree and he got married two weeks ago. So that'll sober a guy up, won't it? Anyway. There you go. Um, it's for the best. Yeah. Uh, but last weekend he came in, uh, or Monday he came in, and we took some of the parts that I brought back from China with me on our new modular design, and we assembled a three millimeter head. And um, we we verified a few things. One is is that a three millimeter material uh, still has a lot of memory to it, especially the stuff we've got is very curly. And so as such, going into the exhaust pipe, it can tend, if you don't have a good luprosity, uh, it will catch, yeah. have a lot of drag. So we will definitely have the, the Teflon coated chute on that. And the good thing is, is I just happen to have some Teflon coated chutes available. So we ran tests both ways. That means that the three millimeter head will probably uh, start to be available in about two weeks for some people. To uh, start playing with, uh, I have one thing that I wasn't pleased with, and that was that we felt that the teeth in the hob shaft needed to be deeper on the three millimeter material. Yeah. Uh, the purchase just wasn't quite enough. Um, I thought that would let people know a little bit about that. I'm trying to think what other thing short term is of interest. Uh, of course, if everybody is, and everybody's asking about the software always, and so mm -hmm. I'll tell you right now mm -hmm. that. Um, <coughs> I did not release the software, uh, but I think we have a Sunday night broadcast coming up here. Yes, we're um, going to be doing another broadcast after this guy. That's after this one guy. So I'm going to resynchronize ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, I will be sharing some code with three of you. I'm sure before the Sunday night broadcast. Yep. So I look forward to that. I look forward to starting to get your feedback on that, and then yeah, we'll move forward from there. Anyway, um, that's about all I have for tonight. Unless there's some questions, let's see what it says. Um, um, nothing for really Probably not much. No. And again, um, we're just making it short and sweet because bad 
the bed's calling me. I actually got up. I've been sleeping for the last 30 minutes yeah. just so I could say hello to everybody and let you know we're still here swinging away. Mm -hmm. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Well, um, <laughs> you got anything you want to add to that? Uh, I guess we could say there is one other nice thing to happen. Yeah. We signed a lease on the 13,000 square foot building and mm -hmm. start moving in next week. Yes. So now we have room to add more people and we have a long group of qualified and actually very nice people already in the queue waiting to join us. Yep. So I think that as, as slow as we are, I think we will get faster. Yep. So, yeah. is that was noteworthy. No, that was extremely noteworthy. Yeah. So, um, if Joe's yeah. watching this, tell him a million thank yeah. yous. Thank you. Someone made it possible for us to do this next step earlier than we would have normally done. Yes. How are the new recipes Dan was working on? Uh, they are, they're working actually quite nicely. Um, and I have them, Yeoman, uh, for some of, the, some of you out there, I've already team viewed in um, because we're still working on individual things for the, for the wiki in order for you guys to download everything. I'm eventually just going to, I'm just getting to the point where, I don't know, we can just go ahead and put it up on the G drive and just download it from there because the wiki is not going anywhere at this point in time because we all have everything else that we're currently working on. Huh. I could give so them uh, maybe the link that we've got. I'll see if we can load it up tomorrow for the link. Okay. We've I been mean, testing I a download link so I can distribute yeah. the software. Believe it or not, that's been a major pain in the neck. Um, um, a simple domestic link is not tough. I do it all the time. It turns out that a lot of our customers are not able to access freely some of the servers that I've been using. I got blocked from China big time. Oh, yes. yes. And then I, I had remember. someone from Vietnam Chai, and they couldn't get access to it, too. So I kind of put a monkey wrench in some of what I was trying to do. But uh, I think we found a way around it. We found some different, uh, what is the right word, host sites? that are actually nationally amphibious and they uh, they seem to work both places. So I'll see what we can do about trying one of those download link sites. Oh no, Less Music says one of the ads uh, from TV tried to mo load malicious code tonight. Yeah, I want to have to get back in touch with TV. We paid for a particular service. They are not delivering it to us specifically for ads, which should never, you guys should never receive ads on this, on this thing. So thank you for letting me know um, so I want to put the beat down on them because we've been paying for this. So, yeah, not cool, not cool, Gus. Not TV. Hmm. Um, that little comment was from Last Music, and he has been doing some amazing printing and giving us incredibly valuable feedback. So, yes, thank you, Les. Also, Les, uh, I noticed that with the uh, striation change. Let's Skype in tomorrow or or Friday if you can, because I really want. I have two suggestions. You mentioned rotating the axis, and I was going to ask you to rotate your part by 45 degrees and see what happens when you do that. I would love to know when you're in a vectored move more often than not what's going on. So it'll be primarily 45 degree uh, moves that you're doing. It'd be very interesting to me to see what happens with that. I like that. So, anyway. Um, you going to say, how are you feeling, Carl? Huh. You know, um, some days I think I'm not getting older. Today is not one of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, I think that's a very, very cool thank point. you for the kind thought. Yeah. It, so. it, you know what it is? Is it's uh, you know you go through thank a sleep cycle. Yeah. Thank you, less music. And uh, you know you're up your last 12, 14, 16 hours. Then at bedtime you're tired. Well, this kind of experience is, is that that hits you about every six or seven hours you get tired you lay down you sleep and you can only sleep like two hours and then you're you're awake again and it's because your body doesn't know my body doesn't know when it's night when it's day because it's actually not daytime in a few hours and anyway bottom line is, is blah, 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 blah. <laughs> what is that he's always off axis anyway <laughs> <laughs> that's cute you guys are all great. We appreciate it, each and every one of you guys. And um, I had a guy come in today and um, <clears throat> from Georgia Tech, and he's working on a PhD. 
and he he's talking to us about something which it'll be very interesting to see how it goes forward but he gave us some really good insight on new types of print heads to start on this summer so even more materials and that's serious mostly conductive anyway. James E. Allen asks how much of a delay uh, in building the printers if you were moving to a new facility? Good question. Very, very good question. Well, <clears throat> it's uh, about four or five days. Yeah. We're not even trying to move yet. What's going on is we got this lease secured. Now the building's going to be cleaned out. And then uh, we have insurance. Uh, when we moved the last time, which was uh, oh, nine to four years ago now, we met a guy, his name is Dorotato, and he is like very few people on the planet. My hero, my hero, my hero. Anyway, he'll help us affect the move, and the reality is everything is really organized, as you can see around here. So it's just a function of transporting, shelving, left to right, and over there. That actual transport won't take more than a day. It didn't last time. People was ever blown away at how fast this went together then. Yeah. The good thing is is that the uh, countertops and actually even office furniture was all left intact. So we don't have much to actually physically move over there. And the machine shop area will not be moved until June 1st. We're going to let them move over the assembly and we're, we're trying to do a isolation for assembly so that the machine shop is treated like another supplier. A supplier with nothing to do but to service us but uh, if someone goes to the machine shop they will have to take a red line drawing one of the things that's killed us along the way is, is we've been able to cheat we've been able to run out and dial in a machine and make a change and the drawings didn't always reflect the exact parts we were building until the cycle went through and this caused a lot of rework for us which cost us a lot of extra time which was not a good thing and it also inhibited us from saying okay great let's get 200 more pieces so we're finally at a stage, especially like with the hotheads, we're ordering hundreds or two hundreds at a time. And other vendors, even in other languages, are able to give us a supply, uh, a limitless supply, so to speak, mm -hmm. or one that all practical purposes is limitless, of properly machined, beautifully done, and impressive, impressive components. So um, don't, 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 don't take that as a panic attack. Our assembly stuff comes first. We also have, uh, over the last month's time, had, well actually over several months' time, so have been adding people that are qualified to do the assembly. And we now have three people, Evgeny, mm -hmm. uh, Spencer Two, mm -hmm. and is what's your other friend's name who came in? Uh, Hartney. Hartney. Yeah. So all of these guys have proven to be very, very capable. And uh, Evgeny's a, a fantastic influence on us. He comes in, he's cheerful. And, and if something's wrong, he goes, hey guys, this will never do. I mean, in his Russian accent. So, and he keeps us going. He, he's, a, he's a great And when he's done with everything. Yeah. <laughs> job's done. Uh, job's done. All work's right. done. Yeah. No, he says all work's done. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> don't panic on that. We, we'll move uh, at the appropriate time. It, more important for us is, is that we couldn't make a future plan on when to add more help because we were space limited. And... Um, yeah, we're, 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 we're fine, and we yeah. won't, it won't impede the progress of, of shipments. What impeded the progress of shipments, I guess I should spill the beans here, was we started having failures on our 14-inch overlays. So the system 30s that were all in process were starting to flake out on us, as well as a couple in the field. So that was very disturbing. Uh, I have spent, oh my God, 100 hours in the last two weeks trying to get a, a viable replacement solution. So right now we're down to uh, a 10 inch panel with a glass overlay. Yep. It turns out that the soft overlays apparently have some kind of a creep problem that if they are left in a pure vertical mode and they heat up and you add time to it that they start to uh, press their own selves. Yep. And um, I, I have some glass, I'll show you guys. All right. <coughs> sure. Eagle and Jay says, I vote we call it a gremlin. <laughs> um, I'll go with that. <laughs> um, X -formal, X formal we'll get into that in just one second. Yeah. This is a beautiful glass overlay, and it is a capacitive touch panel, and I love it. Unfortunately, 
it's I squared C instead of USB. So one of the things we're doing is is I got one guy full time and he's was drugged mercilessly all over Shenzhen with me uh, for almost a week. You can't believe how many LCD people we went to <laughs> to come up with this. And uh, they're trying to get us the USB version of this. Got it. Um, because that's what's required. But this overlay, I mean, when you touch it, you just fall in love with it. So I do have a USB version for 10.1 inches that is absolutely gorgeous. And Wes, what we've also been using is the USB glass touch panel on, on our engines. on our engines, and we have great success with those, no problems. And so, actually, tomorrow we're making the decision on whether we're just going to ship the 10.1s on the systems as well. Uh, in reality, it's a good thing, but uh, we're, that's where we're at. We're stuck on that one thing. So tomorrow we'll make a decision on what we'll do short term. And whatever we do, it'll be upgradable slash configurable so that if we get a better solution or get the best possible solution, it'll be adaptable in the future. Just a couple of screws and a swap out situation. Yeah. But uh, we can't have a system where it's pushing its own buttons. That's not going to do anybody any good. Yeah. At that point, we unplug it and make you run a mouse, which is not what we're trying to have done. And if we, that's where we end up doing, that's what we end up doing. But right now, we have a good touch solution in the 10 inch. I just brought back 30 more 10 inch screens, so I think that that's what we're looking for. Okay. Cool. X423 asks, uh, joining me today, any word on the batch of machines from Vietnam? Ha! Huh. Oh my god. Uh, that's a great question. No, it's a but, horrible um, question for me. Vietnam is a total bust. Other than the fact that they're doing the IP. Yep. From a manufacturing standpoint, from an engineering standpoint, they are not a home run and we we finally came to that realization with them while I was in China um, <clears throat> so they shipped us the parts which arrived yesterday which I went over to Hutch's house to get um, not so not so encouraging they arrived during the day yesterday. however so however I mean I was ready to jump off the ninth floor a few times but it turns out that we have just replaced them with another supplier one who's actually delivering so um, and someone that will do a full machine assembly for us with someone that's trusting, worthy from us. And that's a big thing to say. So um, I guess that one thing leads to another. We had to try working with these guys. They're so sure they could produce for us. But I just think that their resources in Vietnam are not significant enough to do this. Um, Quite limited, unfortunately. It was amazing. It was just amazing that um, they had a great factory and they can make a big piece of iron but uh, the rest of it was not not real yeah. so so you and Jay as we just discussed about the uh, LCD package um, that's the reason why the care package has been delayed for the for the time being the one that's going to be going out so we owe, owe him some stuff yeah so um <sighs> We can send it minus the LCD. Is that, that's acceptable. I'll do that. Mm. So, well, okay. maybe we can review that in the morning. Yeah. Hey, David, shoot me an email and let me know what it is that we're supposed to be getting to you. I, or I haven't written down on the other Okay. One, so. Well, just in case. Okay. And uh, we'll review it. And like I said, I'm hoping to have a decision slash solution by, well, in a few hours, the guys are, are coming online. They come online around 10 p.m. our time tonight. And then uh, they actually, last night, uh, went and got me three different panels during the course of the night. Wow. So they went and got one, brought it back. We inspected it. Then we got another one. Uh, <clears throat> you know, the only difficulty was that none of them were what the, the picture said one thing. The real thing said another. I guess that's never happened in the real world. But... Uh, we're still pounding on it. So. <laughs> David says uh, we can shoot a quick Skype after uh, if you want to join the party. <laughs> uh. <laughs> oh my okay. God! We'll Skype in with you after after the broadcast. Tonight. One of us will. Yeah. I mean, I might be able to stay up another five minutes. Okay. So. Cool. All right. So uh, yeah, pretty much. Oh, X four hundred twenty three says, "What's uh, that you've got on the bench behind you?" <laughs> 
You know, we have a saying around here, God bless Bosch. Yes. So you guys may or may not be aware that we've been selling equipment for 30 years and 35 years into the semiconductor industry. And one of the benefits of that is, is that once in a while, when stuff reaches like 12, 15 years old, out of the blue, someone sends us some units for repair. Mm -hmm. Last year, we got about a quarter of a million extra dollars, all of which went into the printer project. And um, all that came from our best customers out there. So uh, from our old product. And it was a windfall. It was one thing, thing we weren't planning on. And it was one of the things that kept us going, one of the things that kept us at bay, uh, meaning that we held off and tried to make things better rather than having to succumb to financial pressures, which you know is frustrating for people, but a benefit to others. Um, so lo and behold, 10 units came in last week. and. Um, Last weekend, one of the things we had done was one of our, our uh, guys that came in, he pulled them apart so we could get the serial numbers and make an a estimate on what the repairs would be, and now they're going to sit here for the next five or six weeks, uh, and we'll wait for the parts to come in. This is something we've been doing you know, every six months for the last ten years. Well, I wouldn't call them repairs, I'd say they're retrofits in this, in this case. So What happens is, is these are running off of better than decade old technology. They actually have a power PC uh, or had a power PC running at a whopping 33 megahertz. Yeah, come on. And uh, <laughs> it was state-of-the-art vision system at the time. My brother wrote the software and I did all the hardware and then ended up inheriting the software later on. Um, so uh, they're back there waiting for printer upgrades. So that's what that stuff is. Uh, we could show you around. There's also, oh, yes. I guess, you know, you might recognize this. There's a bunch of uh, printers waiting to cross the border mm -hmm. there. And uh, we're in the next room. So, I mean, production marches on. A temporary hiccup with the displays. Yeah, that's it. All right. all right, well, we're about the half hour mark, and that was about all I said I could last. So yeah. I'm going to tell everybody good night. Uh, I apologize for the brevity. On Sunday, we are going to print something. We have not sure what, but we have we're been requested to print with NinjaFlex, PVA, hips, uh, and a couple of other materials. So we are going to uh, get some or several of those lined up and show something. Also, I am desperately hoping that I will be in a position to show you guys why there's a camera on the system. And uh, that will be when we do two materials with two heads and how we use them for the aligning and the targeting. And I think once you see it, you'll recognize that there really is a useful use for this. So until then, I'm going to bid you guys to do mm -hmm. and uh, Blessings on all of you. A million thank yous, and um, we will we will confirm that broadcast by noon on Sunday, and uh, I'm sure we'll make it. Yeah. Um, yeah. There you go. Okay. All right, guys. And in the meantime, if you have any questions, uh, comments, complaints, whatever, um, send it to us at highrel3d at gmail.com. We'll get to you um, as soon as we can. At this, yeah. So yeah. Good. All right. All right. Good night, guys. Good night, guys. Thank you so much. All right.